Hi folks, Ed Amorosa here from Tag Cyber, and I'm sitting with my good friend Jake Kaplan, who is the co-founder and chief executive officer of Synac. Welcome to New York. Thanks, Ed. It's great to be here. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> yeah, we had a pretty, uh, pretty humid uh, week this week. Um, maybe next time you come, it'll be nice and cool, and we can take uh, a nice I have the cool weather out in San Francisco. It's okay. Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> hey, tell, tell me a little bit about yourself. How'd you get into this business? Yeah, so uh, we got started about four and a half years ago. Um, I came out of the NSA before starting the company, moved out to the Bay Area um, right around the time we got started. Um, uh, but before that, we actually uh, spent a few months in Boston, which is actually really where we started the company. We went through an accelerator program there um, called Techstars, um, uh, about a four month curriculum, mm -hmm. got some VC funding out in the Bay Area. And they said, hey, you know, this is a great place to build the company. We, said, we decided. It was the right place to build the company, and um, we've been going at it ever since. We're now over uh, 110 people now, um, and growing very, very quickly. You know, I got to back you up some. So you were yeah, at NSA. Yeah. yeah. Now uh, you're in college, and then does an NSA recruiter come? I think you you might have been part of a cyber corps, right? Yeah. How did that all happen? How'd you how'd you get to NSA? Yeah. So I was part of the cyber corps program over at uh, GW University yeah. in DC. Um, basically, they go pay for school, then almost like ROTC for cybersecurity yeah. nerds yeah. like myself, um, and then you go work for a federal agency afterwards, um, and NSA was the agency I worked for. I was really fortunate to work in an incredibly um, exciting department at NSA, um, uh, formerly known as TAO, Taylor right, Access Operations, right, right. which uh, I don't know if that's still the name, but I believe I they changed it. a few things. <laughs> um, but uh, more on the offensive side of the mission, incredibly fulfilling job, and it was a great way to launch a career in cybersecurity. Now, if you had to describe for folks kind of what Synac does, um, you're on the edge of a lot of different things. Like some people think pen testing, bug bounty, crowdsourcing, vulnerability. There's probably a whole circle of things. How do you describe it when people ask what you guys do? Yeah, I mean, I think if you back up a little bit um, and you examine kind of the work we were doing at NSA, one of the things you certainly recognize in that job is that the vulnerabilities are pervasive. Mm -hmm. um, they're everywhere, and if you have the right resources, motivation, and expertise, you're probably going to get in. Right. Um, and I think what that gives you an appreciation for is just how fundamentally broken penetration testing and security assessments are today how the old way of doing things with the consulting firms or the automated tools has become highly commoditized. Um, and we recognized we had to do it differently. And so the approach that we take is using this more crowdsourced methodology. We recruit, vet, and retain this global network of top white hat security researchers in over 50 different countries. Um, and we pay them more on a success model. So not time materials, but we pay them when they're successful at breaking into mm -hmm. a customer, we pay them based on the impact to that organization. Um, and then we layer that with a whole bunch of really cool technology that we're building for scalability and to create some efficiency in that researcher network that we employ um, uh, as they perform their work. It's interesting. Have you ever had a case where there's been a vulnerability that's been brought to you where the researcher or the team is saying, whoa, this is kind of scary, like some serious critical infrastructure consequence? Like, do you ever jump in and maybe guide the disclosure process carefully? I'm, I'm sort of imagining that the vast majority of things that are found mm -hmm. are vulnerabilities, need to be attended to, customer finds out, they're grateful. There's probably a lot of, you know, I'm guessing 90 something, the high percent, but there must be some cases where you look and you say, wow, this is a, yeah. do you, what, what, does that happen? And, and if it does, what do you do? Yeah. So. Um, given that we maintain an internal vulnerability operations group that uh, reviews every single vulnerability that comes in before we float through to a customer, we're in a position where we can actually start to chain some of these vulnerabilities together, mm. which could mean that we can find something way more impactful. Some than weird one aggregation. Thing, exactly. Right, right, one right. thing that's standing alone. And so um, we can really help customers understand the impact of these issues beyond just like you said, here is a vulnerability, here is maybe the CVSS score, mm -hmm. um, to something that's actually bus you know, a business impactful case. Um, and when you can describe it to them in those type of terms, um, their ability to articulate to their higher ups and to even their developers as to why this is so important um, becomes so much more real and meaningful than just 
here is a report, um, go fix this issue. Um, uh, and I think that's what we really need today. People mm. need to start understanding why, um, not just what. Interesting. Now you guys have built a platform. You have a lot of automation around what you do. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. So it's not just a bunch of pen testers banging away. There's some platform support for this. Tell us a little yeah. bit about that. What we've done is built a, a technology platform that we call Hydra at Synac. The whole purpose of Hydra is to better enable the researchers to be more efficient. Right. And so we'll do things like scanning for rudimentary level vulnerabilities and we'll say, hey researcher, we think there might be an issue here. We want you mm. to take a look at this. Uh, we'll do things like change detection. We'll say, hey researcher, we've noticed it detected, or detected a change in this customer's environment here. Change is indicative of a potential new issue. Why don't you focus your energy wow. here? Um, and this uh, technology gets smarter and smarter over time, right? The more we can bake into the technology and automate, um, the more we can level up the researchers and make them focus on the things that are actually really difficult to find and the things that are likely to matter more to our customers. Mm, awesome. um, and so really we've bridged this gap between man and machine. We've brought the two together and we've married them in such a way that it's just a much more effective solution than just people alone or just machine alone. Um, and given the crowdsource model of engaging with 50, 100 people all at once, the efficacy levels are through the roof compared to anything else on the market. You know, I bet there's a lot of people watching you and I right now on their iPhone. And they're saying, well, it sounds great, Jay's awesome, cool stuff, but there's no way my company can afford this. We have three people doing IT, you know, one person doing security. We've created a more point-in-time product, um, more akin to a typical penetration test that enables a customer to engage over a two-week period, and it's much lower in price. Wow, Actually that's great accessible idea. to a smaller company. And so we are happy to engage with both small, medium, and large businesses that's alike, um, and we can do it today. I want to ask you about do domain specific, kind of looking forward. Do you think domain mm -hmm. specific will be an important area? It's probably not as easy to cover because yeah. you need a couple of people who do what they do, but yeah. what, are, what are your plans there? Well, obviously we're in a very advantageous position given the fact that we can recruit globally um, on a freelance basis. We don't have to hire these folks. and. I think everyone recognizes today there's a massive supply and demand problem and mismatch in cybersecurity. Um, I think the numbers are, you know, three and a half million open cybersecurity jobs by 2021. I mean, th that's a big number. And then when you start to think about and consider, you know, these more um, connected devices and, um, uh, you know, even just our critical infrastructure and people who can actually do testing on these type of very specialized environments, that becomes even more difficult. Yeah. Um, given our model, we can recruit any type of expertise that is necessary for our customers' problems. You know, you have such an interesting background, academic, government, business. Well, let me ask sort of an introspective future question for you. When you're, when you're sitting chatting with people at a cocktail party or something, and maybe they're not in the tech industry, they find out what you do, they say, oh, Jai, I hear, I hear about all this um, hacking of power. Hey, are, are we going to get hacked into the Stone Ages right. here? What, what do you think? Like, I know it, it's hard. When you're a CEO, I know you have to be positive. Mm -hmm. and, and, but I'm just wondering, it, is there a case to be made that maybe there's some bad things that can happen in the future? What, what do you think when you, when you get introspective about that? Yeah. I mean, look, I think the reality is that the vast majority of these sophisticated attacks, I was on that side, are not that hard. Pretty simple, yeah. You know, we're, yeah. we're leaving the, the doors wide open. And, um, you know, it's a real, really the reason we started this company is because until we can fix the basics, how are we supposed to defend against the, the sophisticated zero days that are the out there? The Stuxnet type attacks. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you look at WannaCry as a prime example. I mean, it's just a failure of patch management. Yeah. I mean, this was a O day that was patched and people just didn't bother to update their their, yeah. their Windows devices. I hope you keep doing what you're doing. I know a lot of it is cleaning up some basics. I hope that as you guys grow and become more influential, that you do both the easy stuff and I think you do some hard stuff too for some consequential uh, customers. So we thank do you. both easy and hard end but yeah I know yeah. appreciate it. Thanks so much for All having me above. here. No it was great having yeah. you. Next time you're in New York um, we sit down and we chat again. That sounds great. You're awesome. Thanks, Thanks so much. Jay. Appreciate it. We'll see you next time.